We're going to look here at some factoring questions for the 6-2 quiz. Uh, starting off with number 1, factoring x squared minus x minus 42. Really the pattern we're looking for here is two numbers that have a product of negative 42 and a sum of negative 1. Now if you need to list out those factors for 42, uh, that doesn't hurt at all, it doesn't take too long. Uh, let's see, 3 and 14, and then 6 and 7. Now, of course, one of these two numbers would have to be negative. Since the sum is negative, we'd be looking at the smaller number, sorry, the larger number being negative, the smaller number being positive. The two with a difference of 1 are the 6 and the 7. Uh, it does not really matter the order that you put these in. Uh, it will factor then as x minus 7 times x plus 6. Again, one of the great things about factoring is you can always check your answers by either boxing or foiling out that product and making sure you do get back to what you started with. The very first thing I would do here with number 2 would be to factor out that negative. Um, so that would come out and then we get x squared plus 5x minus 24. So, again, since it is a plain x squared, we'd be looking for the two numbers that have a product of negative 24 and a sum of 5. Again, the product is negative, so we'll have one positive and one negative number. Again, if you want to create that list, it does not take too long. And the two numbers that have a difference of 5 are the 3 and the 8 the smaller number would be negative since the sum is positive. So we'd be looking at negative 3, positive 8 for this one. So that then factors as x minus 3 times x plus 8. And again, you can check that by foiling or boxing that out. Make sure you come back to oh, the same thing we started with. Again, that negative has to come along, and I just about forgot it, so make sure you don't make that mistake. For number three, we do have two variables. Uh, it's maybe a little simpler than it looks, though. We're still going to use the same sort of process, looking for two numbers that have a product of negative 60 and a sum of negative 4. And so looking for those two numbers, again, that have a product of negative 60 and a sum of negative 4. Again, it does not hurt to create that list. There are going to be two numbers that are fairly close together. Uh, and end up, we would end up looking at 6 and 10. And again, if you want to list that out, that's fine. Uh, it ends up having to be a negative 10 and a positive 6. Now what happens there with the u's and the v's is that we do just get u for each of those binomials. That's how we get the u squared. That'll also put the u in the middle term. But the 10 and 6 are really v's. That's how we get the v squared at the end and the v in the middle term. And again, you can always double check if you're not quite sure that that does turn out to be what we started with by either boxing or foiling out that product. All right, so here with number four, we're looking at a question where it's not just a plain y squared. We have a 15y squared. We would like to also consider, again, a common factor, but in this case, there is not a common factor that we can take out. There are a couple different ways to look at this. One way to look at that is to say that it could be a 1 and a 15, or a 3 and a 5 for the y's. And it could either be a 1 and 16, a 2 and an 8, or a 4 and a 4 for just the plain numbers. Now, the question is, how do we put those together so that we get 32y? Again, any which way that we put these together with the, again, y and 15y, 3y, 5y, and then just the plain number for uh, these values over here, we will get the 15y squared, we will get the 16. Again, question is, how do we get the 32y? The way that happens is we multiply one of these first two numbers by one of the second two, and then the other one, um, and then we add those together. So looking at something like the 15 times 16, there's no way that's going to end up being the 32y, so I don't have to think about that too much. Now the 15 and 1 and 16 and 1, that gets me close, but 31y won't get that job quite done there. 
Um, and again, looking at the 15, pretty easy to tell if it's going to be close or way too far to even consider. Like the 15 and the 2 is 30. Well, we could get 38 then. Uh, 15 and 4 would be 60, so no way we're going to do that. So I can fairly quickly <coughs> eliminate the 1 and 15 from consideration. So now I have it down to the 3 and the 5. Now I know in class we talked a little bit about uh, not having to consider uh, things by eliminating common factors, but the 3 and 5 don't have any common factors with the 1, 16, 2, 8, or 4. So we'd be looking at all of these. Again, fairly straightforward though to eliminate some because they're not going to be very close. So like the 5 times 16, not really an option. Neither is the 3 times 16. 5 times 8 would be 40, so that would be too much. Uh, 3 times 8 would be 24, and then 10, so 34. So we're getting close there. Looks like the only thing we have left would be the 5 times the 4 and the 3 times the 4. And looking at that product, we get a 20y and a 12y. That will certainly give us the 32y that we want. Now the way that we put that together then... Like I mentioned there, the 3y and the 5y, and it doesn't really matter which one goes where, it's just how they're paired up. Um, of course, they're both multiplying 4s, so really it's a plus 4 in both of those, uh, so you don't really have to worry about which one goes where, but again, sometimes that's an issue. And again, you can always double check to make sure that works by either boxing or foiling out that product and making sure you come up with 15y squared plus 32y plus 16. All right, for number five, uh, again, looking at the, the 28m squared plus 57mn plus 14n squared. So again, we've got m squareds and n squareds and then an mn in the middle. Um, we would want to consider, uh, again, looking at a common factor that we could take out. It's just that 57 um, is, doesn't have any common factors with the 14 or the 28 so we're just kind of stuck with those numbers. Now, 28 and 14 may be a little bit of a pain to deal with, so I would highly recommend writing out your list of factors for the 28 and the 14. And, of course, the 14, 1, 14, 2, and 7. And, again, trying to get to 57. And, again, many of these you can eliminate either by uh, the fact that they would have a common factor, or just that they're going to be way too far off in order to get the 57mn. Uh, and again, these would be m's. That's how we get the m squared. And then these would be n's. That's how we get the n squared, and then put them together. That's how we get mn. Uh, so looking at how we come up with the 57 for this one, So after looking through those, uh, what we end up needing to do is do the 4 times the 2 to get 8mn, and the 7m times the 7n to get 49mn, and that's how we get the 57mn. Again, it takes a little time to figure that out, but there are only so many different options, so you go through them all um, until you find the one that works. Again, the way that this will look, 4m, 7m, and again, I uh, didn't have to think about it too much on the last one because the numbers were the same. But here the 4m multiplies the 2n. Well, if my 4m is here, then that means that my 2n has to be over here. And then my plus 7n only has one place to go right there. And again, if you're ever not sure, box or foil that out to make sure you've got the right product there. All right, with number six, we've got the 5x cubed, 15x squared y, and the 50xy squared. Um, again, if you kind of just fly into this one and don't think about a common factor, you're going to make it much more difficult for yourself. Uh, simplest thing to do here is take out a 5x. That will make things much more manageable. We get the plain x squared to begin with. We get a 3xy and a minus 10y squared. So similar pattern with the variables there. Um, with this one, again, all we really have to look at is uh, which two numbers give us a product of negative 10 and a sum of 
3. Uh, again, there's not that many options for the 10. We're talking 1 and 10, 2 and 5. So, of course, we'll be looking at the 2 and the 5. It's a negative 10, so one of them is negative. It's positive 3, so we'll be looking at negative 2. So, really, it comes down to that 5x on the outside. And, again, remember, we've got those y squareds to consider. But So, it's going to be an x minus 2y and an x plus 5y. That's how we get the 10y squared. That's how we get the 3xy in the middle. Alright, for number 7, again, it looks a little bit more difficult with the y to the 4th and the y squared, but we can really treat that as if it were a y squared and a y. So long as that first exponent is twice that of the second one, it's going to work out in the same pattern. So really, again, just looking for the factors of 10, 1 and 10, 2 and 5, and the factors of 9, 1 and 9, 3 and 3, and trying to determine which of those combinations is going to give us the minus 9y squared. Of course, with the negative 9, one of those would be negative. Um, I would just go out and guess, and if I've got it backwards, I can switch it uh, easily enough. Um, so again, trying to find that combination, there's not all that many different ways that can happen, so you just have to kind of think about it and figure out which combination gives you that minus 9y squared. In this case, what we end up with is the negative 15 and the positive 6. So again, that's a 6 here and a negative 15 there. That gives us the negative 9. So in our factored form, we have the 2y and the 5y. And again, where you put each of those doesn't matter, but they do have to be matched up correctly. Now we are using a 3 and a negative 3. The 2 wants to multiply the positive 3, so that would have to go over here because, of course, these two will multiply. And the 5y wants to multiply the minus 3, so that, of course, would go there. Um, oh, and I just about forgot, but again, since it is a y to the 4th and a y squared, we would have those as y squared. So again, always good to look back at what you started with. Make sure that you have it completely factored and you didn't forget any uh, little details. All right, and then the last one for this set, we've got uh, 24z to the 8th plus 18z to the 5th minus 27z squared. Um, it might not jump out at you right away, but of course there's a common factor here. We can take a 3z squared out of everything, and if you don't catch that right away, it's going to be very difficult to get that uh, before you're finished here. So I end up with 8z to the 6th plus 6z to the 3rd minus 9. Now again, we just looked at the last one where we had a y to the 4th and a y squared, so it's going to work out the same here because z to the 6th is twice as much as z cubed. Um, another option you could have is you could use substitution. In that case you'd probably want to let x equal z cubed um, and then plug that in uh, I'd probably leave the z squared alone, but replace z cubed with an x. And So if you wanted to do that, that works out fine. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to go ahead and factor this one. Again, looking at the factors for 8, again, a pretty short list. Just like the factors of 9, a pretty short list. And again, I'm just going to guess on the sign there. Um, and if I'm wrong, I can switch that easily enough. So just trying to find which combination is going to give me that 6z cubed that I'm looking for. And it looks like that uh, combination we'd go for would be the 4 times 3. That would give us 12. And then the 2 and negative 3 would give us negative 6. So that would be a total of 6 there. So again, don't forget that 3z squared that we factored out at the beginning. And then we have a 2z and a 4z. And again, keep in mind, the 4 wants to multiply the positive 3. Well, the 4 will multiply the, the number in this spot, so we would go plus 3 there. And then minus 3 here. And if I look back again, I'll catch the fact that I didn't have high enough degrees here. Again, those will be z cubed. That's how we get z cubed in the middle, and that's how when we multiply those together, we get 8z to the 6th. Um, thanks for watching, and hopefully this uh, really helps prepare you for that uh, quiz that you've got coming up.